I broke my diet last night. In grand fashion. Can I start by saying, you know something? I order a salad before I'm going to eat. Okay? You know what I'm talking about? Creamy Italian dressing. And end your breaking olives. That's right. The pitted olive. It's, I got news for you right now. You got, if you have any people from out of, out of state come over, you got to warn them about the fucking pitted olive. I don't know what they were thinking with that one. You know what? You eat a pitted olive, then you got to reach into your mouth. Like, huh? I'm just going to get this pit out. <laughs> Highly disgusting. Sometimes I contemplate, let's just swallow the pit. What are we talking about? Let's face it, it's like turning your intestines into a rock tumbler. Maybe we can get some of that uh, that buildup off the walls down there. Anyhow. Then, I don't know, it's real disgusting. Then I, well, I'm eating my dinner. I had a pork chop. Uh, to die for? No. <laughs> I'll tell you, right here in West Babylon, they're on fire. I just fucking, it was like a spicy pork shop. They put like peppers in there or something like that. I got to tell you, my nose starts running. And then they give you the cloth napkin, and I'm wiping my nose with it. If I was another, like, Patreon of the place, I would have got up and walked out. Literally wiping my nose every five seconds with a cloth towel. That you, you know goes back to some hay machine, like a uh, washing machine, and comes back out, and you're basically wiping your mouth with somebody else's snot. I, I was doing it. Hell, everybody was doing it. Anyhow, my salad comes out. Right away, my son, I want salad. And I'm like, ah, oh, jeez. All right. I'm like, all right. You brought this kid into the world. So, you know, you got to give him salad. So I'm like, all right, here's some salad. I said, why don't we get him a salad? My wife. Because he's not going to eat his chicken. Like, whatever. So my son, every five seconds, I want salad. I, and it's not even nicely asking, excuse me, Dada, could I please have salad? I know you had a long day at work and, you know, your life basically sucks. But could I have a little bit of your salad, please? I'd be like, you know what, son, you got a point. Here, take some of that. I want salad. Well, what? Now, well, how does it feel to want? That's what I want to know. Anyhow... I said, can we just get him a damn salad? My, my, my wife refuses. He winds up eating my, half my salad. Then he says to my wife, I want more salad. She orders him a salad. So I'm like, I'm doing the math here. And I'm like, wow, my son gets a salad and a half, basically. And I get half a salad. And then my wife starts calling me greedy. I think the fucking math doesn't add up here. You guys are greedy. I gotta have coffee, man. I'm drinking coffee again, too. Get off my back. I'm on this diet. I was so fucking miserable. I didn't even know how it was possible to get more miserable. People were coming up to me at work. I was just looking at them like... What? What? It's not worth it, man. It's not worth it to look good in, a, in front of a fucking mirror or in front of others. It's just not worth it. You're better off just being a fucking slob. It, 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 it's the truth, though. And my, my body was designed to eat garbage. I don't know how to t tell you this. I, like, I, I am the true Olympian. Just nobody knows about it. Because my body thrives. I feel the best. After I eat a sleeve of Oreos, like, man, I feel great. I, people eat it and they say, ah, oh, you know, I feel like, you know, it gets uh, a stomach ache, a belly ache. It's like a belly ache. I don't even know what that is. I could eat, I, I don't know, a box of Twinkies and, and wash it down with a key lime pie. And I feel like, like, fantastic. You feel the prostate drop down like a lead weight? You know what I'm saying? Ah, 
forget enlarging my prostate. I want world's biggest prostate. Somebody holds that title, by the way. It's in the medical books. Okay? Yeah, they're not going to show you it on TV. All right? I want a prostate so big I'm carrying it around like a suitcase. My goal is to get to the grave with the biggest prostate. Puh. I want a, a, a casket that has a big enlargement on the outsides to fit my goddamn prostate! I don't know, if I went to the doctor and he said you had an enlarged prostate, I think I'd high-five the guy. I mean, isn't this the, isn't this the whole point? I'm, I'm 47. I mean, let's face it. I don't mind shaving 30 years off my life for good eating. I'm here to tell you. And then my wife makes me do the most embarrassing calls to the waiter. She said it to him, my son wanted another piece of bread. You understand? The bread basket's empty. Do I have to tell you who's responsible for that? Guys, I was rubbing bread in my salad dressing. I was rubbing the, the sauce off the plate. This pork chop was in a brown sauce. Okay. I'm rubbing my bread across the fucking bottom of this plate like it's a sham wow. Guys, it was a fucking party. You, you ever you ever come off a diet and I don't know, like really throw sand in the gearbox? I come off a diet hard, baby. I told that son of a bitch waitress, I said, you come out here with one of those chocolate turtles. She's like, uh, what? I said, a ch chocolate turtle, you know, the caramel thing. And she says to me, oh, we don't have them in the shape of a turtle anymore. I said, I don't care. Bring it out in the, in the shape of a fucking St. Bernard. I don't give a shit that it, it, it's crumbly chocolate on top of caramel, on top of ice cream, on top of uh, like the, the shit on the bottom of a cheesecake, graham crackers, buttery graham crackers. Okay? Shape it like a dick and I'll suck it. How about that on for size? These goddamn waitresses. And then my wife wants an extra piece of bread for my son. I'm like, what are you talking about? She wants to get him one little roll. I was like, are you shitting me? These are the most embarrassing requests I got to put into the fucking wait waiter. I couldn't even do it. I couldn't even do it. The waitress came over. She's like, how's everything? I was like, ah. Uh, I'm looking at my wife. She's looking at me like. I'm like, ah, nah. and the waitress walked away. I swear to God, I couldn't say it. That's what a coward I've become. And can my son have an extra roll? If that is, listen, if it was a mob run place, I don't know. I would have had somebody follow me home. I don't know. Put a bomb in his car. Whatever the fuck. Raining on my day off. What else is new? Then my wife the other day. We're going into the city. No. I'm like, what are you talking about? My wife's on vacation. My son, he's on, on winter leave. Okay, do I, do I tell you right now? Every time I come home, I open up the front door and I don't know, I just want to turn around and leap into traffic. Guys, everybody's home. The screaming starts. As soon as the door opens, the screaming, the dog barking. I don't know, my dog, my dog, I think he's got rabies now because he just, he attacks all the socks in the laundry. I don't know, he's getting in the laundry basket somehow, some way. And you can't, he hides, you, you go to take the sock, and he comes at you like, I, this is like something they should film in On the African Plains. Ah. 
It's just a fucking lunatic bin. So my wife comes at me. She wants to go to the city. I'm like, what are you talking about? What do you need? Your head adjusted or something? I mean, have you seen the fucking city lately? Has anybody? I don't know if you follow the news. New York City, I don't know, maybe a biggest shithole place to go on planet Earth. <laughs> and that's where my wife wants to go with my son. And I'm like, I don't want to go into the city. Huh? Well, I'm taking Tani anyway. I'm like, no, you're not. No, you're not. So next thing you know, I'm going. And I have to tell you, I was shitting my pants about it. Guys, I'm 47 years old, okay? I'm not exactly Bruce Lee walking anymore. Okay, and number one, I get off the subway, red hair popping. I mean, tall, thin, red hair. I mean, I might as well wear a shirt that says Everlast on it. I don't know. I'm going to wear a fucking Target shirt, basically. That's it. And by Target, I mean like a, a shooting range Target shirt. I'm just going to put a big red handle on my wallet. You just walk, you just come and take it from me. And I'll do absolutely nothing about it. So anyway, we take the train into this city. I don't know. It was my son's first time on the train. I'm like, wow, son, isn't this great? What a form of transportation. And she, he's like, what's that sound we keep hearing? Oh, it's one of the suspension springs is about to come flying out of this fucking train because apparently they don't do maintenance on trains anymore. I had a train that I was convinced was going to come flying off the tracks. There was such a horrendous noise underneath, like bolts have fallen out of something. It was metal knocking and squeaking and squawking. I said, this is great. Wouldn't it be embarrassing to die on an LIRR uh, train derailment? Anyhow, we get into the, you know, they go, we go into the tunnel for Payne Station and it's all dark. And I'm like, hey, son, we're in the turbo tunnel, do. And he's looking at me like, okay, dad. He's getting to that age now where dad basically turns into a piece of shit. Okay. Anyway, now we get into Penn Station here. We step off the train. I'm going to tell you something right now. As a father, you got to turn into a Secret Service agent. We got this, there's train platforms involved, there's bombs, there's fucking traffic going bananas upstairs when we get up there. There's, there's like, you know, syringes hanging on the floor. There's rats running around. You come to New York, it's a beautiful place. I said, I love what you brought me, honey. This is great. This is great. Oh, who's that? That's just Uncle Charlie masturbating in the corner over there. You didn't know? That's right. Why is he staring at us and masturbating, Dad? I don't know. That's what they do around here. Did you notice the Colt 45 in the other hand? Who has a better party than Uncle Charlie over there? That's what I want to know. Anyway, we hop on the subway. We get over to where the, we're going over to the Museum of Natural History, right? You get off the fucking subway. Number one, you go on subways. I I don't know about you. I've seen the movie Death Wish. I know what can happen on a Sunday on a subway. All right. I brought a roll of quarters and a sock. Do I have to tell you? I said, I'm ready. I said, I'm ready for this fucking place. I actually thought about bringing a switchblade. Can you believe it? Like, Really? It's like, what am I, a 1980s punk rocker heading to CBGB's? And I said, what are you doing? You're not bringing a switchblade. Put the switchblade away. Anyhow. As soon as we get off the subway, there's a guy out there, like, walking behind us. And he's like, kill all the women and all the children. Kill all of them. Kill everybody. And I'm like, all right. Now, this guy's like, I hear him walking behind me. And his voice is getting louder and louder. I'm like, all right, we got we got a basic uh, we got we got Henry Looney Tunes behind me, and I didn't want to turn around to make eye contact. You never turn around. I'm sorry, I would have took a, st a stab and right in the back. I'm not turning around and making eye contact with this guy. Just not doing it. I said, come on, family, move faster, move faster. 
So we wind up going to this fucking chicken place to buy chicken. I don't know. It's a rule around here. You got to eat every time you go somewhere. Me, I, as a kid, we went on field trips. You weren't fed. Do you understand? I get back from a field trip looking like Karen Carpenter. I don't know. We go into this chicken place. My, my wife has no... I'm, I'm going to be Tony Romo right now. Spatial awareness. How about that? We're walking around the city. She's like... No! 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 I'm like... There's like a guy, I see this guy, he got, he's walking around like this, smoking cigarettes. And he's only looking with his eyes, like he's, he's like, he's not turning his neck, he's like. I was like, this is Captain Suspicious right here. I'm like, what is this guy doing? He's lurking. That's the only, like, adjective that came to mind when I saw him. I said, look at, look at this guy, he's lurking. Like, nobody sees this. I, I, I see everything. And, but it's amazing how people walk around oblivious. I don't know. We go, we get, we get to the Museum of Natural History. What am I going to tell you about this place? My son wants to go to the space, the space, the planet, they got like a planetarium in there. So we go to the planetarium. I'm like, hey, I'm fucking down. Then there was this big wall of like interactive things you can go up to. It was like stainless steel metal and you could like press buttons and then the light would turn on behind a galaxy. I'm like, this is like so lame. My kid's got an iPad for Christ's sake. And it's like push a button and a light comes on behind like that film galaxy. It's like on film. Like this is why nobody goes anywhere anymore. It's like this whole dis exhibit completely sucks. And my son's like, he's doing it. He's going through the motions. But at the same time, he just wants to, I don't know, go take a shit somewhere. And I got to sit there and say, hey, isn't that cool? You know, when you press that button, a buzzer comes on. This is what it sounds like from Planet Hell. Bang! Like, wow, isn't that cool, Tan? And he's like, yeah, Dada. I have uh, I have a hundred thousand video games on my iPad at home for free at a touch of my I, I just touch the screen, and a, and a party starts. But this is great. And then they then the planetarium was like the lowest resolution uh, thing you've ever seen. I said, "What the hell is going on here? We got four K in the house. I got to deal with this now." Fuck everybody standing. That place was boring as shit. I gotta tell you right now, you go into the African room, they have all the African animals stuffed in their in environment. It was dusty. It was dusty in there. So doesn't anybody hop in here with a shop vac? Half a crying out crin. These guys, I tell you what. And then every time you see an animal that you think, you know, oh, well, that's a, that's a antelope. And then it's like, they, they have the Latin name for it. It's like, okay, we get it, smarty pants. But I mean, what is it in like real human? You know, I was like, I said to my son, that's a, that's like a, that, that's a fucking lion if I've ever seen one. And it was named something else. I was like, hell, if that's not a lion, get me out of here. And I don't know, we go see the dinosaurs and I'd be like, hey, hey, honey, to my wife, look at the size of the dick bone, huh? Huh? Because a lot of them look like a pelvis. It looked like they had a dick. If you look at you look at Tyrannosaurus Rex, really like not 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 a Jurassic Park version. Got a big dick bone. It literally looks like a dick. I said, "Holy shit!" I don't know how T Rex was doing doggy style with those short arms, though. You know what I'm saying? That's, on, uh, that's the other thing. Can we get a video on how dinosaurs fuck? <laughs> what, this is, life is so fucking boring, man. I'm telling you right now. I've, I've had it. I've had it. All right? You, you, you're you shitting me? You, you wouldn't sell out a pay-per-view with an animation of two 
Tyrannosauruses actually fucking each other? Anyhow, I want to see a Tyrannosaurus Rex do squats. You know what I mean? How much do you think we could put on the bar? <laughs> yeah, baby. I put two fucking aircraft carriers on it. Well, okay. Two PT boats. How about that? When you realize how big a PT boat is, those fuckers are huge. You know, you looked at them, you thought they were like, oh, like, like, like I don't know, like a Boston whaler. And then you see a PT boat, it looks like a fucking cruise liner up close. What's that? You fell asleep? I don't blame you. And that's the other thing. We go When we go into the museum, we're standing on line to get tickets, right? I said, boy, oh boy, look at this. How, how are they going to like ram a rusty piece of fucking rebar up my ass now? $25 a ticket to get into this fucking Gabasha Boing fucking museum. I tell you what. We get up there and I'm looking at like the different ticket prices. It's like 25 adult, 20 bucks if you, I don't know. If you dress like a woman, but you're a man because we're in New York City and that's like the thing to do now. Holy macaroni. Let me tell you something. New York City lost all its teeth. Am I here to tell you right now? I almost felt like a badass in New York City. I said, that, listen, baby. If you were in the new New York City in the early 80s, which I wasn't, I mean, you were getting your ass kicked and mugged at the same time. You have no idea. You got raped five times going to work. This was like, I don't know, people were breaking bottles everywhere. You have no idea. Graffiti. Graffiti's still a thing. Saw a little graffiti out there. Yeah. That's how you know. I say, you know, yeah, listen, New York City will keep you on your toes. Uh, There's a reason why they call it the city that never sleeps. Because you're constantly on high alert. You're like, there's cars whizzing by, there's fucking creepazoids everywhere. You really, I, you know, you never go to New York and you see a guy like this. <laughs> in the sidewalk. All right. I mean, one of the scariest things you can see is black guys smoking cigarettes. I'm sorry. It scares the shit out of me. You never see black guys smoking cigarettes. And when you do, it's like, what's going on here? I'm sorry. Very scary. <laughs> I go the other way. I'm so afraid of black guys smoking cigarettes. Nothing against black people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm the one scared. I just say something's up here. I always see, when I see a black guy smoking a cigarette, I say, there's something going on, motherfuckers. I know, what is that, racist? I'm sorry. Okay? No, black people, you know I love you. I really do. But anyway. So that's it. You know what? New York City does have that buzz. Okay? That can't be explained. And it's still got that buzz. It's literally a buzz. Anyway, um, what was I going to talk about? Oh, the fucking, yeah, the ticket prices, like 15 for kids. And then it's like, and then it was like lifetime or, or yearly pass, annual pass, like membership. I'm like, what are you fucking kidding me? I said, who the fuck is getting a, uh, a, an annual pass at the Museum of Natural History? <laughs> I, I mean... Listen, I went there once, and I, I don't think I'd ever have to go there my, my entire life again. As a matter of fact, I don't think I will. And then I go inside, and there's these two guys, and they're looking at, like, they had, like, a, this, this case with, like, beehives in it, and, like, term, termite nests, and the two guys were staring at a termite's nest like this. And I was like, oh, these are the guys that get the lifetime membership. There they are. And the one guy pulls out this camera and it has a lens like this. I'm like, hey, come on, come on, come on, come on. 
if a guy comes in with a camera like that to the museum, they sh we should be able to take him in the back room and, I don't know, hit him over the head with a fucking woolly mammoth tusk. We, I know we got one lying around back here somewhere. Anyway. And we'll walk in and they have the butterfly display. It's like It's like this exhibit where you could go into this, like, glass auditorium and there's butterflies everywhere. And there's a sign right there and it says closed today because, you know, we're done. We're basically done for the day doing this display exhibit. So my wife's got to go walking over there and there's like a little bit of a line. I guess it's the, it's the last people that can go in. And my wife gets on the line. I walk over there. I say, hey, uh, did you read the sign that said that this exhibit's closed for the rest of the day? Okay. That was our cue to keep on walking and go look at other things now that we've just paid hundreds of dollars to get into a museum. I get that face. I say, okay, we'll sit on the line. So we sit on the line, get to the front of the line. So my wife asks if the exhibit is closed, in which the, the, the clerk behind the desk says, yes, it is. And then we proceeded to turn around and walk away. And accept the 20 minutes that we just threw out the window! I don't know. This is what I got to fucking deal with. I'm telling you right now. And all I wanted to do was go see the insects. You know. I just wanted to see the in insects pinned up. You know, or, or can we go into one of these, they have different cultures and whatnot, you know, like ancient cultures. I just want to go in there and see cock and cunt. If, I mean, if we're being honest, and I mean, when ancient tribes, they used to, they, they used to carve out cocks everywhere. They'd have like a coffee mug with a big cock coming off of it. You hold it like this, you drink. Everything was cock and cunt. I said, tribes were great. What happened? I'd rather live in a tribe. I'd be the guy carving a dick all day. The chief would let me live. He'd be like, oh, oh look at him. I smoke from Marlboro Peace Pipe. Look at him. He made another cock. <laughs> rejoice, rejoice. His amazing talent. We get a, I don't know. You get a lot of fucking poontang. I'll tell you that. You go out to the neighborhood TP for a drink, you know, you're like, hey. And you're like, hey there, baby, how are you? She's like, oh, hi. What do you do? And you're like, maybe you didn't see the fucking beer mug. And there's a fucking cock and balls bent down like this. <laughs> She's like, oh, my God, you're the local cock carver. If that doesn't get you Hans Blowy. Ah, to hell with it. My wife's got to guilt trip me. I see, she goes, ah. <laughs> ah. I need an oil change. I say, all right, Jiffy Lube down the block. I go to Jiffy Lube. I'm telling you right now. I don't crawl on the cars to do oil changes anymore. Sorry. By the time you get the thing jacked up in the air, all right, you're pulling out a fucking... Just just taking the fucking 70 pound floor jack down to two steps to get out of the shed. Okay? It's like I'm not Franco Colombo anymore. Then you gotta jack up the car and then you got the assholes out there that say you gotta use jack stands. I just put them under the cars. It's like as a married man, a car crushing you to death would be like vacation. So, you know, I reluctantly use the jack stands and you get under there and you unbolt the oil goes all over the fucking place. You got to have a rag. First, it goes down your arm up your sleeve. All right. And then you got to fight your way to, through Walmart. OK, every I don't know. You get, going to Walmart's a nightmare and a half, but their oil is cheap. What am I going to tell you? Get the filter. If we're going to make it worth it all, right? You get the filter and the oil. And then, I don't know, then you got to come back in and fill everything back up. By the time you're done, you're just like... 
I kind of went to, to, to Jiffy Lube up here. Anyway, my wife goes goes to the, I said, go to Jiffy Lube. Go to the Jiffy Lube. She goes to the Jiffy Lube. She comes back. <laughs> you know, you never check the power steering fluid. I'm like, what are you talking about? Nobody ever does. That's a rule with power steering fluid. It's as long as it's not squeaking to the point of shattering bay windows as I drive down the road. You never check. Ah, ah, they replaced the power steering fluid. I'm like, what? What, what are you talking about? I snatched the receipt out of her hand. Sure enough, she paid like $90 to get the power steering system flushed. I'm like, what are you doing? They told me that I needed my power steering fluid changed. I wanted to go down there and start smacking them around. Are you kidding me? I've owned an automobile. I've owned automobiles for, for my entire life. Maybe I checked the power steering fluid on one of them. God damn it. I said, why did you call me? These guys, they get you every time. You just got to go in there and say, listen, I, I told I leveled with the guy. He comes up to me, you know, he's going to give me the salesman's pitch. I'm like, dude, you change oil for a living. Let's get down to brass tacks here. I'm broke. I don't give a shit about this car. It's not, it's not fucking worth, it's not, it's not worth the price of scrapping. So why don't we just do an oil change? And that's it. And the filter, I don't care if you screw it off somebody else's car and put it on mine. Whatever's cheaper in this hoe. I tell you what, I fucking I give a I give a kiss to God. I give a kiss to God for the person that sent me this cup warmer. It's like a little miracle happening right in front of my face. Every time I drink this coffee, I expect it to be cold and then it's it's pleasantly hot. You don't understand. Things like that make life so much more enjoyable. How far in are we here for crying out, Crin? 34. I got this Atari. I got an Atari 2600 I'm selling on Facebook and Marketplace. With a bunch of games and whatnot. And this guy messages me, you know... I'm interested. This is what I get. You know what? I, this is what I wanted to talk about. The guy, the, these guys, they email me. Uh, you know, it's always, is it still available? And I just punch the button that says, yes, are you still interested? And, and then the guy replies back, yes. And then I write back, okay. And, uh. I don't know. Can something fucking happen? That's what I'm going to type next time. It's just back and forth. I said, I already know. Listen, it's so easy to buy things on Facebook Marketplace. It's so easy to beat other people to the actual item. Because all you have to do is be very succinct. I said, this is who I am. This is where I live. I'm coming to get your item. I want it now. Just, I don't know. I don't know. I got to deal with these fucking people hawking me in China here. And then, uh, then, he, then another guy says to me, uh, great. You know, I, I'm, I'm all into it. I, I want it. I'm like, oh, fantastic. Uh, I give him my address and he says to me, uh, do you mind if I go inside and we test it out? I was like, What? So I write him back. Do you want me to cook you dinner too? I mean, what the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah, you're gonna come in my living room. I'm gonna I'll hook up Atari like it's the olden days. What can I get you? A bowl of kicks? What's it gonna be? You want to just sit in there in style on on the floor here? Oh, that's my wife in her underwear. Don't mind her. All right. What the fuck are people thinking? And he writes back, oh, you didn't have to be sarcastic. This, that, the other thing. I said, I don't, I don't know what, you know what? 
go kick some rocks around somewhere. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm done with people. Listen, I, I, I just get rude at this point. I'm sorry. You're pushing me into a corner here. Sure, come on in the house, will you? Sit down. That's it. That's my dog right there. You want to scratch his belly? What else do you want to do? You want to take a shit in the bathroom? Come on. You want to, Why don't you go into our, our cabinet and open our, our finest bottle of champagne? And I see this commercial on TV for this fucking Pizza Hut. Uh, was Pizza Hut still a thing? Uh, maybe it was not. There was Domino's. They're showing their pizza and they're pouring honey on top of the pizza. I said, what the fuck is going on on planet Earth? I said, I've never seen anything so egregious in my life. I love it. They're pouring honey on top of pizza. Actually, I thought to myself, this is disgusting. So they're like picking the pizza up and, and there's like honey dripping off the greasy pepperoni. I'm like, what point have we got to in this our civilization? I was watching this video about... Um, John F. Kennedy and his initiative for p getting young people in shape in the United States. And the requirements, like every school had requirements. Like you had to do like, I don't know, 80 pull-ups, like 150 uh, push-ups. I was like, this, this, is, this is like crazy, but everybody used to do it. You got kids eating pizza with honey on top of it. I don't even know what kind of fucking, like, board meeting that was. Okay? Oh, my God. Hey, I got an idea. Okay? At, what, what was this guy, like, 350 popping Lipitors? He was like, yeah, guys, I got an idea. All right, hear me out. Honey on the pizza. And uh, wait, wait a second. Why are three of you throwing up onto the boardroom table? And I don't know. The boss was probably three sheets to the fucking window. And he was like, honey on pizza. Why not? This is how you know we're in the marijuana age. When you can actually sell honey on pizza. That's it. You wanted it. You got it, baby. It's one thing about smoking weed. You think of some interesting uh, f food combinations. I'll tell you right now. Oreos with ketchup. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have fucking thought? And as you're eating it, you're like, does anybody know about this? <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic. And I'm listening to... Uh, what was I listening to the other day? I was listening to Kansas. How about that? Carry on my wayward son. And it's all because I, I watched a documentary about them. Absolutely great documentary. I recommend it. I mean, why why be here right now? And uh, yeah, Stephen Stephen Tyler's an asshole from Aerosmith. I'm here. I'm here to tell you this needs to be known. Because this guy's a fucking prick. Steven Tyler was known for, if if a band would that opened for them performed better than them, he would go and he would pull the plug on them. I mean, dick move. <laughs> Do I got to tell you right now? That's a fucking asshole. I don't know. Maybe you can hide behind the drug abuse at the time or whatever. But that's an asshole. So they were touring with Kansas. And they're in Kansas. So, of course, Kansas is going to go over big, right? So Kansas is getting over. The sound guy ahead of time knew they were playing with with Aerosmith and that Steven Tyler had a, a habit of, of yanking plugs. So he routed all the power for Kansas to a second main that nobody knew about. And then he put dummy cords up to the, the first main. And sure enough, Kansas is getting over big, like I said, because they're in Kansas. And out comes Steven Tyler trying to pull the plugs out. And if you know the band members from Kansas, they were all like Hillbilly Jim. They're like all big, hairy fucking guys. When one of the guys went up to Steven Tyler, who probably weighed, I don't know, he was probably like a dope head 75 pounds. And basically got in his face and read him the riot act. He probably said, hey, chicken neck motherfucker, you try to yank out our cords again, they're going to be wrapped around your fucking, your geek neck with your big mouth. 
And even the band, the Aerosmith band, was apa- was apologizing because this happens to be Steven Tyler's behavior. So let it be out there. He's a cocksucker. Fuck him. Fuck him. But what's amazing is, and we're going on and on here, is that is that we got to do something here. I'm fucking going to sit here and talk about Kansas. Holy crime luck. Guys, we've entered the bizarro world of this. This is the this is the Nintendo console from hell. Am I here to tell you? I don't know what's going on with this thing, but we did a bit of video about it before, and then I lost it in the most bizarre circumstances you could possibly imagine. And only for this console, it's popped up in my life again. I said, Jesus Christ. This Guys, we're heading into another dimension. Drop the projector, goddammit! Oh my God, just to show you how nutty this thing is, it just drove me crazy for a second. The power button is on the opposite side. I know guys, I'm freaked out too. All right, let's see what's going on here. That's right, remember we had all these Contras? Oh wait, where's the sound? All right guys, here we go. I mean, we got Contra one through eight. Whoa. Very loud. <sighs> Mortal Kombat 4. Really? Rockin' Cats? What the, What just happened? I was just in Mortal Kombat 4. And the volume just kicked down. Here we go. Guys, I don't know if I'm ready for this. What? This is a lot of characters, too. I don't know what's going on. Okay. What? Guys, this isn't a bad game. We're kicking all sorts of ass here. Oh, shit. I, I'm, I'm pretty amazed by this, actually. Hold on, let me try to get the audio. Gotta get the audio up here. Oh, there we go. Guys, we got blood and everything. No. All right, can we get out of this? How do we get out of this? I guess you just hit the old reset button here. Double dragon for, what is 90 tank? Tank A1990?
I don't know. I'm pick the stage. Okay, stage one. Oh shit. Oh shit. Here we go. Fuck you. Guys, here we go. Alright, you ready for this? Alright, they can't shoot through this. Oh shit! Get get out of here! How do I get out of here? Oh shit! How's that my game over? I didn't die! Oh, f fuck off. Your game's over. I guess Robocop 4? Oh shit. Tim Fallen. Oh, look at this. Ready for the music? Oh, my God. This thing's hitting like a brick, people. Here it comes. Play. Here it comes, here it comes. <laughs> okay, let's go. Oh shit. Oh! Can't shoot I can't shoot straight up? Come on. The city is full of dirt bags, man. Oh! Oh! Alright, keep it moving, right? How do we jump up? Oh, I can't go. Listen to him land. Hold on a second. That's a nice sound. Oh! Power upgrade. Oh, yes! Nice. Oh, fuck you. Oh. Oh, out of here. Not a bad game. No, the other way, the other way. No, no, no. Damn it. Where do I gotta go? In the crack house? No, 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 what is he throwing at me? God, platforming at its best. No, no! Alright guys, I think we've had enough. We 
we've had enough. What else does this thing have to offer? Hot blood and what? Hot blood ice hockey. Hot blood soccer? Cage? All right, hold on. Let's let's really get down here. Gorilla War, Dead Fox. What the hell is Dead Fox? Oh shit. Easy. He's saying, "All right, son, go out, go out to." Take a jump in a cab and get me a pack of cigarettes, will you? In Africa. Where's it South America? Wow, look at this. This is a fleshed out game. Guys, is this Rolling Thunder? Guys, isn't it interesting that we're getting these types of games? on really how am I supposed to prevent that from happening oh jeez all right take it easy will you you always let a bullet fly out in front of you right and, and, and then you die. Don't take my advice. No girl that time. No, I knew that was going to happen. Oh, shit. Who wants some? No! That's not fair. That's not fair. Yes, because I want to get that machine gun. God effing damn it. God damn it. I just want to get the machine gun. Nothing in that one, right? Oh, we finally got past that jump without losing health. Come on, come on. Alright, we'll take it. Come on, come on. Where's the girl, for Christ's sake? Oh, because we continued? Oh, that sucks. Does that mean the gun's not there? Really, guy? Come on. Come on. That's it. Jump to your death. Come on down, sucker. This is the gun. No, no! What am I doing? No! Here we go. Oh, yeah! I even did that. That's it. That's it. Yes. Nice. Yes. Have a nice day. Oh boy. Nice little game, man. Nice little game. Oh, fuck you. Oh, we're right here. Okay. All right. Yes. Yes. Guys, guys I'm in 
the zone here. Oh boy. Damn it. Come on. I docked! I docked! Ah, that's right. Where are you gonna put us? Where are you gonna put us? Ah. I think we got one more in us. 600! Awful rushing? Is that, is that awful rushing? What is that? A, a football game? I gotta know. Huh? Oh boy. Oh, I thought that was gas. Alright. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Alright, let's go. Let's go, motherfucker. Shit! Let's hear for that music, huh? Uh, this game is fucking horrendous. Hold on a second. We got it. Aryan? Arena. Um. How do I fight? Oh, okay. I guess that's how. Really with this game? Oh, I guess I'm not supposed to allow anybody to pass. Okay. Uh, um. Uh, uh, um. All right. Guys, this game is horrendous. This is really horrendous. I got HP. Look at that. Am I supposed to be getting the red ones? Oh my god, guys. I'm falling asleep here. I mean, we could keep on going and going here. Aquarium? Thaxter? What the hell's Thaxter? Oh boy. Oh boy. Wow, okay, we were a ninja and then a ship. We were a ship, then a ninja. Whoa, that's quite a jump this guy has. Oh, okay, I can turn into a ship. This is insane. Wow. Jeez, jeez. This is kind of crazy. All right, let's try to stay in ship form. Um, all right, we gotta get it. Oh boy. Oh. destroy this thing god damn it all right let's get down to brass taxi we got to do this the right way let's transform right away okay and take care of business seems we got some type of auto shot here Thing. All right, we, we 
gotta turn into a ship here. Come on, dummy, turn into a ship! Oh, I'm just gonna commit suicide, I can't take anymore. I can't turn into a ship! Ah, oh, alright, you know what? Okay. Jesus Christ. Guys, do you realize you just tuned into the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization? And you better believe that. With a 4K face! We'll see you next time. Guys, you haven't been to the Patreon page? You don't know what you're missing. We have the Advices program. I think we're going on 70 episodes of the Advices program. This is the email, okay? Guys, your lives are fucked up. I'm here to tell you, I mean, just listen to this. I don't know, ask a fucking doctor. How about that on the size? Enough of, enough of your goddamn advice to me. I'm giving the advices here. It's a crummy, cheap place. Do you understand? Everybody there is a, is a fucking schlantavagoon. Basically. Celebrate! I know, it's like pulling a hangnail up to your knuckle. I'm here to tell you guys, this is the email me. Email me. M -m -m. Email me, okay? Put advices in the header, that's how we see it. And we're gonna solve all your problems. Just like... And guys, we also have the Slam Hit Show, You're the Boss, where you write to me in the previous video in the comments and you tell me, well, first you insult me, tell me I'm a dirtbag from hell, that's fine. And then you tell me what game you want to see us play here on the show. That's it, you're the boss. You pick it, I play it. It's a lot of fun. All right, Patreons, thank you for your continued support. We'll see you next time.